So I was invited down to Nikon's Experience Hub to get a hands-on with the new Z6 II and Z7 II. It was a great experience and I managed to try the new cameras as well as some new lenses like the 50mm 1.2, the 14-24mm 2.8, as well as the 58mm 0.95 not. So I think that Nikon did a great job in improving the Z6 and the Z7. The Z6 II and the Z7 II now both offer dual card slots, a larger buffer, USB power delivery, and as well as dual X-speed processors that allow for faster autofocus. For those of you who have used the Z6 or the Z7 before, you'll know that the autofocus was not the best and sometimes it did leave some things to be desired. The new Z6 II and the new Z7 II have a much better autofocus and that's clear right from the start. You can see just how quick it snaps from one object to the other, how the tracking has improved so much. Uh, it picks up faces and uh, eyes much faster and there's this new focus mode that allows you to control where you like the camera to look for the eyes and faces at. So how do F-mount lenses feel on this camera? There's a really smooth full-time autofocus, and not that, I think there's just um, less of a squeaking sound when you use G lenses. If you'd like to compare it with my Z6 with a 35 1.4, here's how that sounds. So these two cameras also come with a useful vertical grip. It feels good, it's comfortable in my hands, and I'm quite pleased that it also allows for hot swapping, which is changing batteries without turning the camera off. You can see how that works over here. You just pop open the back cover, take out the first battery, replace it with another, and there you have it, two full batteries at your disposal, which is really great if you're using it for live streams or for videography. There's also a small tweak made to these cameras, which I think most of you would like. You know the small sensor that switches the display from the viewfinder to the monitor? Yeah, that automatically turns off the moment the screen is flipped out. I think that's really useful and it's a small touch. And it just goes to show how much detail Nikon puts into their products. So I know a lot has been said about these two new cameras and how they're not exceeding expectations or jumping ahead of Canon and Sony in terms of the mirrorless systems. Some would say that the features should have come earlier in the first version of the Z6 and the Z7. But I think that Nikon did a really good job with the Z6 II and the Z7 II. The changes they made shows that they are listening to their customers. And I think this will really convince DSLR shooters like myself to make the switch into the mirrorless systems. Although the Z7II's price has not been released, the Z6 II will release in November this year at a price of $3,099. So um, if any of you would like to sponsor me for a Christmas gift, that would be appreciated. Moving on, I'm really excited to be using the Z6 II for Esplanade's Bay Beats next month. I'll be using the Z6 II as well as the Z6 and I'll be able to give you a comparison for both cameras, tell you how they feel and show you some concert photos as well. Right before we end this video, I'd like to give a big thank you to Xavier and his team at Nikon for giving me such a great experience the other day and approving the Z6 II for my use at Bay Beats. If you're not an NPS member yet, I would encourage you to sign up. I've left the link in the description below. It's really worth it and you will have quite a few perks as a Nikon professional service member. Well then, that's all for today. Tell me what you think about the Z6 II and the Z7 II. Subscribe to my channel and leave a like for this video or watch the other videos on my channel. Till next time, see you.